Well, today's the day that we've been waiting for. Let's haul off some beef steers. When we bought our farm a few years back, we really wanted to make sure that we were putting our land to work for us, and to us that means growing as much of our own food as possible. Now we've got a few acres that are fenced in pasture, and what better way to grow food than beef? These are the third and fourth beef steers that we've raised on our farm, and they gave us more trouble than the other two combined. But now that they're off, let's talk about the first five mistakes we've made while trying to raise our own beef. We made these mistakes so you don't have to. Before we dive into our mistakes, I want to tell you what our strategy has been to this point. Because we don't have a bull and we don't have a cow and we have no desire to have any of that kind of action going on around here, what we've been doing is buying a weaned calf somewhere between 550 and 600 pounds and bringing them here to our farm to finish out. Typically what this means is they're on pasture for a few months before we transition them into a finishing phase where they get a lot more feed and their diet is carefully monitored. When all is said and done, this is probably a more expensive option than having your own cattle herd, but for us it makes a lot more sense to do it this way. Maybe it wasn't for you, but that's how it works for us. Mistake number one, you've really got to feed them. If you want your steaks to be marbled and just beautiful like you'd buy in a really nice steakhouse, they've got to have a lot of feed going in. We found that feed that has a very high corn content leads to a nicer marbled finish. Now if you're feeding anything that's going to consume 30 pounds of food per day, that's going to cost a lot. Find a way to buy your feed in bulk. For us, buying our feed in a bulk tote cut our feed prices in half. And it was a lot of work too because I don't have a really heavy duty trailer. I have a 5x8 little mower utility trailer and I could only fit a 1500 pound tote on that trailer because that's all it would hold. So be careful, don't mess your stuff up and don't be causing any accidents going down the highway carrying a bunch of feed behind you. But if you can find a way to buy your feed in bulk, it'll save you a lot of money and I would expect it would return a nicer product for you in the end. Now mistake number two, make sure that you're set up for success and that you have the ability to handle these animals. Obviously you've got to have enough grazing for your animals to take advantage of, but you've also got to make sure that your fences are equipped to keep those animals in. We had a heck of a time with these two steers we just raised. Number one and number two weren't all that bad. Number three and four really kicked our butt. And make sure you have some means of transporting these animals whenever they get ready to leave the farm. You can find livestock trailers for pretty inexpensive all day long on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, although like everything else, they've gone up too. But for us, we still borrow a trailer from some of our friends. I don't like doing that because I like having control of my own equipment, but whenever this is something that we're not going to use more than a couple of times a year, right now it just makes more financial sense to just borrow it. But before you bring any cattle to your farm, you've got to make sure that you have a way to keep them in and then a way to move them off the property before they ever get onto it. Mistake number three, find a reputable butcher and schedule your processing date early. If you're not aware, butchers all across the country are incredibly backed up at the moment, and some of them may have a six month or even up to a year or longer waiting time before they can get your animal in. If you're planning on keeping a beef steer for six, eight, nine months, whatever that may be, you might just be scheduling your processing date before the animal ever arrives at your farm. And finding a reputable butcher may be even harder than finding a date that you can get in. I've heard horror stories of people getting animal switched that, you know, they take one in and they get back somebody else's. You might also run into the problem of having a butcher that's inexperienced and they might not give you back as many cuts as maybe you deserve. Instead of getting X amount of steaks or roast, you might end up with a higher percentage of ground beef rather than some of those more desired cuts because maybe the butcher just didn't know what they were doing. Thankfully, this isn't a problem that we've run into ourselves, but we have gone through a couple butchers just because we weren't totally satisfied. Mistake number four, buy the right breed. If you decide to do this and you start looking around for calves for sale, you're going to find dairy bottle calves. Don't do this. Dairy cattle breeds like Holsteins, which you can find bottle calves for a dime a dozen, they do not finish like beef and you're going to put more feed into those animals and get less meat. Because of their genetics, dairy cattle just don't put on muscle mass like a dedicated beef breed like an Angus does. So since you know you're not going to be buying a dairy calf, what kind of beef breeds should you be looking at? Three of the four beef steers that we've raised were either a Charlay or a Charlay Angus Cross. The other one was a full Angus. I think our first steer really messed up our perception of everything because he was a Charlay Angus Cross and was completely docile. 
it was amazing just how calm, cool, and collected that guy was. But these last two, 100% Charlet that we have, were wild. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that we brought these animals home, kept them in the barn to get used to us for a week, and then the day we turned them out on pasture, they jumped the fence and they were gone for a couple of days. And in that process of trying to recover these animals and get them back on my farm, I'm talking to people who are just telling me nightmare stories of their Charlet steers, that they're just a flighty breed, and you just get all kinds of problems out of them. Now, I've heard Angus are a bit more docile than maybe a Charlet is, I'm sure there are differences between breeds, and I'm sure everybody's got a little bit difference of opinion, but this leads into mistake number five, buying one that hasn't been handled much. If you can buy a steer from a local farmer that you know, that you trust, and that guy or gal is out there in the field every day with his cattle, feeding them, socializing with them, when that animal moves off of that farm and you bring it to yours, there's a really good chance that it's going to be much more docile and adjusted to humans than another one that maybe they have a huge cattle operation and maybe they can even give you a sweet deal on a calf. But if they don't socialize with that animal, you might run into a situation like we had where those animals are just wild and they really don't ever settle down. If you plan on being out in the field with them and feeding them and socializing and maybe even giving them a scratch on the head every now and then, I have young kids that like helping out with chores and those two, if they were out in the field, my kids would not have been anywhere near these last years that we had. And before I take off out of here, bonus tip number six. Once you get your system figured out, try to buy another one. Since we were already buying feed every month and fooling around with these animals and watering and doing all that stuff, really it made more sense to do two. And because we were able to sell three halves of beef rather than one, and if you're like me and you're paying a mortgage on all this, having a little extra change rolling around, not a bad thing. It was definitely more of a headache, but if you're already doing it, you know, what better way to learn and get better at it than just jumping feet first into the fire. Here in another few weeks, we're gonna be getting our beef back from our processor and we're gonna go over all the cuts that we got and maybe how much meat you could expect to get back if you decide to do this like we did. And if you have anything else that you wanna learn about or any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments and if it fits, we might just address it in that video. So thank you so much for watching our channel. Really means the world to us. My name is Reagan. Thank you so much for watching GWP Homestead. See y'all soon.